So as, as you may know, uh, the checkpoint, uh, some of the checkpoint inhibitors we're talking about have been uh, used in uh, different tumor types and approved, uh, such as uh, atezolizumab uh, that has been approved, and there seems to be also encouraging activities in uh, bladder cancer. I think the future of uh, atezolizumab in head and neck cancer um, basically will probably rely on combination therapies uh, given the fact that we already have two FDA-approved uh, checkpoint inhibitors in the recurrent metastatic setting. So I think the future uh, certainly is opened for combinations uh, with other agents, uh, certainly is opened also for looking at the, this agent in the uh, uh, definitive uh, therapy setting. As far as the uh, DIRVA uh, trials, um, we are still waiting the results of the uh, PDL1 negative uh, durvulumab in combination with the CTLA4 inhibitor uh, in patients with recurrent metastatic disease. Uh, we will also be expecting the results of uh, the combination, the same combination in comparison with the extreme regimen uh, or single agent durva in the uh, first line recurrent metastatic disease. There's always, there's also interest in combining durva with, um, with, um, vaccines uh, uh, for treatment specifically of uh, HPV-positive related cancer. As far as Afelumab, there is interest, I think, in combination with uh, tumor vaccines, um, but we're also waiting for the phase three uh, randomized trial uh, combining um, with platinum and radiation versus the standard platinum and radiation. Uh, so that would be an interesting trial to uh, look for. And the question of adjuvant checkpoint inhibitor or adjuvant immune therapy is a question very much um, uh, of interest uh, and uh, under investigation currently uh, in head and neck cancer, um, there are a couple of um, cooperative group trials which are examining this question. Um, and the question there is, uh, are these agents helpful in a pure maintenance setting or what is the what is the appropriate way of administering these uh, these agents in that setting? Uh, is it in combination with radiation to begin with, following which we would give them in maintenance, or is it in a pure maintenance setting where we would basically uh, complete the definitive therapy and afterwards start a pure maintenance uh, with these agents? We still don't know the clear answer to these questions, but certainly. It, this is a question that makes sense to uh, explore. Other immunotherapeutic strategies include uh, vaccines. We know that prevention vaccines against HPV uh, are likely to benefit patients decades down the road. There are also therapeutic HPV vaccines, which might be promising and beneficial to combine with immune checkpoint receptors. There are oncolytic viruses, one of which is FDA approved for melanoma, and these are now being integrated with immune checkpoints in head and neck cancer. Intralesional injection of uh, TVEC or other oncolytic viruses plus immune checkpoint receptors, combinations of HPV vaccines or other vaccines show that uh, a whole spectrum of immunotherapies besides the immune checkpoint receptors open up a new world of treatment for this uh, challenging disease. So I think as a general principle, uh, patients should be considered for clinical trials first because clinical trials are really looking to push the envelope uh, compared to the current standard. So if we had a clinical trial that is adding something to nivolumab, uh, we will certainly consider putting that patient on the clinical trial as a first option. Uh, the KIR uh, inhibitor with nivolumab certainly is a very interesting uh, at least the, the, the early data uh, seems to be very encouraging and uh, would be certainly a trial we would be enthusiastic in, uh, in trying to, uh, to put patients on. Um, outside of a clinical trial, certainly nivolumab would be a, uh, the current uh, standard uh, that we would use.